I also just want to make it clear, like, none of this stuff is sponsored. None. It's not like they're paying me or even offered to pay me or that I'm even on their radar. I don't, I'm not even monetized yet. I'm very far from monetized. Which, on that note, you better hit the subscribe button because we want you here. We want to build a community and like, yeah, come on guys, hit the subscribe. Um, welcome to another vlog. This is a little bit of a different situation that we have going on today, so I hope you're excited. If you hear a little tip tops around, okay, here, she's coming to join us. Enjoying the vlog. So, I wanna start this off by saying, like, listen people, I am not a dermatologist, I am not a doctor, I'm not here to make recommendations to you or whatever you may have it. I just decided that I wanted to start focusing more on my own skincare and I'm taking you guys along on the journey. First things first, why is it that I have decided that I want to start a new skincare routine or like a skincare journey? Quite frankly, I didn't really have much of a routine before. So my day-to-day -day normal makeup routine is just a little bit of concealer and powder foundation on top of that like a setting powder for the concealer under the eyes and then powder foundation around my head just like little dusts yeah but even with the little makeup that i do wear i have i don't know kind of just like maybe because i always feel like i don't have enough time i just want to get where i'm going faster like i want the feeling of i woke up like this yeah, and I think one of the best ways to get that feeling is to have radiant, beautiful skin that makes you feel, say it with me, confident, right? I don't know, kind of like anyone else. I just want skin that I can feel very good in when it's like completely naked. There's a part of me that kind of believes that like the skincare industry and the beauty industry is just like, you know, it's just one big like capitalist scheme, you know, like I got a mix of all these products here. Some of them are expensive, some of them are not. It's just like, they just got us buying into the hype. But I've never tried a skincare routine before. So like, why wouldn't I try? I think also as I am getting older, I know I am still fabulously young as a wonderful millennial woman in her early slash mid thirties. But as I'm getting older, I'm getting more tapped into like, okay, I think taking care of myself, taking care of my body is not only important, but it will also be part of what makes me feel good as I continue to age. I'm also gonna keep it real. Since I've started this YouTube journey, and I've been seeing myself a lot more in camera. Like right now, we are a very comfortable distance from the camera, but there have been times when like pff, this ultra 4K iPhone has been really close up in my face. And I have just noticed that I have like texture, like everybody does, texture is very normal, but I would see the texture that I have and I would see um, the hyperpigmentation I would have. And I've just noticed these things that I would just like to improve. At the end of the day, what matters most is not what's on the outside, but what's on the inside, but also how we feel about ourselves, yeah? And I think for the most part, I don't like want this video or anything to like be a part of the problem of like pushing how we have to have perfect this and perfect that and blah, blah, blah. But I have just decided for myself, I want to work on um, building my skin to a place where like, I don't know, I don't wanna be, I thought that in my 30s I wouldn't still be getting like pimples and blackheads and like that sort of thing. I really thought that that ish would be over, but like it's not, you know? When is that gonna stop? When I'm in my 40s will I stop getting pimples? When I'm in my 50s will I stop getting pimples? Like, cause last time I checked, like when my mother was raising me, like she wasn't having no pimples and stuff. So I kind of feel like this stage of just like teenage acne has never gone away and I'm really over it. So yeah, that's that. Also, sometimes I'll be hanging out with my friends, like for instance, like Mariah or Melissa. And I'm just kind of in awe at like how smooth and like unpigmented their skin is. And I've been like, oh, how do you get your skin like that? And like, 
these women have skincare routines, right? So I am very slow to jump onto trends or like to jump onto the bandwagon. And I've, I've wanted to have clearer skin, better, healthier, more improved skin for a while. And when I talk to people and they tell me that they have a skincare routine and I can see that it works, I'm like, maybe I should build a skincare routine for myself. And that is exactly what I did. And that brings us to where we are now. Okay, so before I jump into my skincare routine that I have now and like how I went about building it and where I am in this journey of kind of rating and reviewing, I will tell you a bit about my skincare routine before I started getting more intentional about my skin. And that is like represented by this little section over here. Honestly, there's not a lot of intention behind this. Because I'm someone who has always had, um, I'd say that my skin is maybe like a combination. Like I have some areas that are dry, some areas that are oily. By the end of the day, after like, I've either been out all day with no makeup on, or I've been out all day and had makeup on, my skin is definitely gonna lean oily. My skincare routine before mostly was using this CeraVe um, salicylic acid smoothing cleanser, which I've been like using for a very long time. And like the reality is like, I don't know if it was actually doing anything for me. I'm going to keep it real. Sometimes I'm just using products. I'm like, I don't know if it's actually doing anything. Sometimes I would alternate it with the cleansing facial wash, the moisturizing one by the brand Simple. I usually would wash my face first, dry it. Then I would use this Mario Badesco rose water to kind of just like dampen my face again. And what I had heard or what I had learned was that when you have like a little bit of moisture on your face and then you put hyaluronic acid on it, it helps it absorb it more. So that's why I did that. Then I would use the hyaluronic acid. And then, what do I have over here? Oh, then I would use this um, moisturizer by the Inky List, the vitamin B, C, and E moisturizer. And I was using these products just because like, I heard that they were good, they were simple, they were straightforward. Some of them were popular. As far as taking off my makeup, I, this is basically like my go-to holy grail, these simple makeup remover wipes. Uh, this had been gifted to me and it's the Shishido Benefiance, Benefiance Extra Creamy Clean Cleansing Foam, which is also a makeup remover. And like, I would use it cause it would work and I liked it. Um, is this something I would buy again? Probably not because it's expensive and the simple wipes do like a wonderful job. And I actually find using the makeup remover wipes and like literally seeing what's coming off my face on the cloth, I find it very satisfying. So probably will stick with my simple makeup remover cloths. And then as far as whenever I would have a breakout, if it's like a singular, very annoying little bump, I would use the Mario Badescu. Um, drying lotion and that's something that I've used literally since I was like in high school or college university as the UK people say This was also something that a friend had recommended to me um, She was like alpha arbutin is good for hyperpigmentation So like every now and then if I had a dark spot I would kind of put it on and it would like kind of work But none of this again like I'm saying was particularly like that intentional I was never tracking how these products were working or like what was going on with my skin um, this was also a recommendation from a friend, Paula's Choice, the 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. And this is when I would be having breakouts. I would put it on that night. And actually I find that this like actually works. So this is something that I would say I, is still a part of my um, current routine. And when I have a breakout, I sometimes will just go to this and help my skin not be all broken out. Now, how did I go from this to my current morning daytime skincare routine and my current evening um, skincare routine well let me tell you so i did go off of to a certain degree recommendations now the important thing to know is just because something works for somebody else does not mean it's going to work for you yeah and i had a very high awareness of that when i got started on this journey so i knew that i would like learn from mariah what her routine was she's also we have very similar like skin complexion she's a black woman like you know some of the things that i some of the things that i deal with like she is in the category of women who might have the same like skin qualms, right? 
So I felt like she was a good place to start and I love the way her skin looks. And I want my skin to be like smooth and beautiful like hers. So she gave me a number of recommendations and then I kind of combined those recommendations that she gave me with my own personal research. Yeah. And my own personal reach research was a combination of recommendations that I also would see online, beauty magazines or some skin doctor influencers that I follow on Instagram. For instance, I think her name is pronounced Dr. Iwoma Ukuleje. Um, I follow her beautiful, wonderful, smart, intelligent, fabulous black woman uh, based here in London. And she gives a lot of, she's actually a clinical doctor for skin. And she gives a lot of recommendations and advice on her Instagram. And I would take these recommendations between Mariah and Dr. Iwoma. Um, and I went and did my own research, primarily using two websites, skinperfect.com, S-K-N-P-E-R-F-E-T. That website is run by Evie Samuel, who's also another black um, clinical like skin chemist, I believe, that I follow on Instagram. She has a lot of information on her website about what is good to help prevent hyperpigmentation or to help soothe breakouts. You can take a like a, a skin ID test on her website and it tells you if you have like dry skin or oily skin or combination skin, like what products would be good for you based on the, the specific issue you were trying to address. So I relied a lot on her website and I also relied on skinsort.com. And this website is a site that helps you understand products, especially like what's in them. And it helps you build a routine. If there's a product that I'm very interested in, but maybe it might not, I'm not sure if it, interacts well with another product in my routine because it might have a certain ingredient that wouldn't react well with another product in my routine. I would go on Skin Sore, tell me more about the product. So I really like that website. I would also highly recommend. Okay, so can y'all see me? Let me get a little something, something to sit on. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. Okay, so how did I build my current routine? On the Skin Perfect website, Evie Samuel breaks down like skin concerns into like certain categories and I focused on the ones that like I want help with. Hyperpigmentation, dullness and texture, and breakouts, yeah? So overall, I want to reduce the number of breakouts, be like brighter and more radiant. Like On that site, there are certain recommendations, for instance, like alpha hydroxy acids, can help with dullness and texture. Also vitamin C can help brighten the skin because it promotes collagen production. But for instance, vitamin C is something that can be very sensitive to your skin. So like you don't want to mix vitamin C with AHAs, BHAs, retinol, niacinamide, and like other things. That is something I paid a lot of attention to in building my skincare routine. If in the morning, I am using vitamin C. I don't necessarily also want to have all these other products that are super heavy with like AHAs and BHAs and stuff because I'm already using vitamin C in the morning. I do want to use AHAs and BHAs in general, but perhaps I need to reserve those for the evening because I don't want to like over exfoliate my skin with these strong products. That's a big reason why my skincare routine is in the certain order that it is in. So let's start with the morning routine. I knew that I wanted to incorporate vitamin C as like this brightening radiant thing that's a part of my morning routine. So I knew that in terms of the face washes I used and other products, I didn't want to use something that was like very stripping or had like lots of AHAs and BHAs. That brought me to the first of the products I will talk about in my skincare journey, the Tasha Rice Wash. This product is a bit of a pricey product. We're gonna keep it real. I knew that in the skincare journey, I didn't wanna have this routine where like every single singular product was on some like BS, like a hundred dollars, a hundred pounds, like no. That said, I also do feel like there's a little bit of truth in like, you get what you pay for. So I knew that my skincare routine that I was building out was probably gonna be like a mashup, you know, slightly pricier products, but also like more affordable products. So we can't afford to just do only pricey products. So what I did was I actually got like a little trial version of the Tasha rice wash. And um, yeah, I don't know what to say, but I liked this. 
Uh, I was almost disappointed that I liked it because I was like, I, I wanted to not like it because it's so expensive. <laughs> but I loved it. I love starting my day with this product. It doesn't have like any AHAs or BHAs or any like harsh stripping things um, that I was trying to avoid for my morning routine. So that's a thumbs up. But it also just like, it feels so nice. Honestly, it feels expensive. It smells delicious. And I love starting my morning with this. Like, I love starting my morning in a way that makes me feel like I'm a fabulous bad bee goddess, like everything amazing in life. And washing my face with this makes me feel that way. Guys, I'm a very new YouTuber. So I also just wanna make it clear, like none of this stuff is sponsored, none. I ain't got no reason to be blowing smoke up your behind about Tasha. It's not like they're paying me or even offered to pay me or that I'm even on their radar. But yeah, I'm just telling you the truth. I don't, I'm not even monetized yet. Like by the time this, when this video comes out, I'm not even monetized, I'm very far from monetized. Which on that note, if you're watching and you're enjoying it so far, you better hit the subscribe button because we want you here because we want to build a community and like, yeah, come on guys, hit the subscribe. So I really love this. And because it came with the dewy skin cream by Tasha, I was like, I'm gonna try that too. And I did. And I also loved this. It smells amazing. I love the way it feels, but this is actually part of nighttime routine. So we'll get to that. Anyways, love this. Sorry, Lily. I honestly didn't hesitate or waste too much time to just buy the full size version. Like really nice packaging. J'adore, j'adore. So there is gonna be a part two to this video. And there's also like a dupe of this Tasha rice wash that I wanted to try. I haven't gotten it yet, but I will by the, by the time part two comes out, I will have gotten um, what they say is a good dupe for this product. And I will try that and I will let you know how I like it, but I actually really love this. And I think even if I get the dupe and I love the dupe, I'll probably will stick with this because I love it so much. So that is the first step in my morning routine, washing with the Tasha rice wash. After I use a gentle bamboo face cloth just to pat my skin dry. Before I was just using like my normal body towel to like dry my face, but we're trying to be sensitive to the skin these days. So, and then once I do that, I tone my face with this Liz Earl Instant Boost Skin Tonic. And this is something that was recommended by Mariah. She uses it daily. Her skin looks fabulous. I tried it. I love the way it feels. I just put it on a little cotton round and pat on my face. And it's very watery. Like maybe some would even say like it's a, it kind of feels a bit like an essence perhaps. I don't even really know what an essence is. So I don't know why I said that. I think it's because Mariah said it to me. So I'm just parroting. Smells good. And what I love about this is like, first off, when I wash my face with this, like this is not particularly drying, which is nice. There are sometimes like when I used to wash my face with this, it, my face would feel like really dry afterwards. But with this, my face actually feels like pretty moisturized. But then when I dry my face and then I add this um, instant boost skin tonic, oh my God, my face already feels like so nice and moisturized and like not tight and not parched. So like already by step two in my routine, I'm already feeling a lot more hydration than I usually would. This, I made a note to myself, has a really, really teeny small amount of BHA. The percentage of BHA that is in this is very, very small. Then, you know, there's never going to be anything that I feel like just replaces hyaluronic acid. And like, it clearly is a very like core central um, moisturizing aspect of any skincare routine. So I use the hyaluronic acid by the Ordinary, here I have a bigger bottle than what I've had before. And I'm gonna share something. I think that The Ordinary changed their, changed their formula for this because for a very long time, I was very accustomed to using this hyaluronic acid um, in both sizes, in the 30 milliliter and 60 milliliter. And this has a certain kind of like viscosity that i've been used to like it's very gooey it's not liquidy at all like very viscous kind of consistency whereas when i bought this recently in the 60 milliliter bottle 
this is not as viscous it's quite liquidy actually and it feels different when i put it on they both say hyaluronic acid two percent plus b5 but what i noticed is actually this smaller bottle says hydration support formula with ultra pure vegan hy hyaluronic acid whereas this one says a hydration support formula with hyaluronic acid pro pro vitamin b5 and ceramides so i think they did change the formula whatever i'm like still using it but I had gotten so accustomed to how this felt that it kind of weirded me out when like, I don't know, not even a week later, I, I bought some hyaluronic acid in their bigger bottle and the formula felt very different. Is that impacting my skin? I'm not really sure, but maybe I will learn a bit more as we go on in this process. Also, as I was building out this process, I slowly introduced these products to my skin. So I basically kind of, for the most part, stopped using these. Obviously, I still use hyaluronic acid. When I have a breakout, I'll still use that or that, and I still use this. But the face wash and everything, like I don't, the Maribisco rose water spray, I don't use anymore. I allowed my skin to acclimate to using the Tasha Rice wash and the Lizeral Tonic and some of these other things before I integrated the vitamin C into my routine. I'm at a stage now where I put the vitamin, vitamin C on like almost every other day, close to every day. Also with some of these products, you wanna test them out on your skin first in a small patch because you like don't know how you're gonna react. This, I do feel like it does a little something for me because over time, I do feel like my skin is getting like more radiant and brighter. This also smells delicious. The one that I've gotten is the vitamin C Fix Concentrate Extreme 15% by Nip and Fab. There of course are so many vitamin C serums that are on the market. So I think the other one based off of reviews and what people were saying that I might have considered was the Strivectin Super C Retinol Brighten and Correct Vitamin C Serum. Like people loved that. I also did know that I wanted to put a retinol in my routine, but I I didn't like some some people love that they can get one product that like combines all these things. But for me, I like things to be separate because I want to know how a specific product is actually affecting me. Multiple chemicals are in one product. It's hard to like isolate the problematic chemical or the problematic serum or whatever it may be. So I wanted to keep things separate. That one had very, very good reviews. And I, I felt like uh, across the internet, the what was being said about it was pretty consistent so i was very much considering that but i decided to go with the snip and fab one um instead because my research led me that way then as a fourth step in my morning routine um this moisturizer the inky list vitamin b c and e one was like working fine like again i don't know what it was actually doing if it was doing anything i was just kind of using it so but I decided that I did want to try something and be more, try a new moisturizer and be more intentional about what I was choosing. I knew I wanted something that was going to be very gentle, that didn't have a lot going on in it. And I decided to move towards Aveeno because it is like literally suitable for baby skin. It's something that um, doesn't really have many chemicals in it. it. There's a lot of like natural stuff in it. Um, so it's not going to interact with like other stronger things, for instance, that you're putting in your skincare routine. Whereas upon a closer look, I realized that this has niacinamide in it. And niacinamide is a wonderful chemical and a lot of people use it. They a lot of people swear by it because it smooths and evens texture. But again, I wanted um, the different steps of my skincare routine to like be as organic to a certain chemical as possible so that if I was gonna end up having a problem with a certain chemical, I wanted to be able to identify it and like remove it. Cause I did end up actually integrating niacinamide into my skincare routine on the evening side. And we will get to that. I will tell you how my skin interacted with it. And I'm actually glad that I kept it separate and not in a combined, um product because then i was able to remove the niacinamide from my routine when it wasn't really working for me so step four in my morning i use the aveeno moisturizing cream and like not really too much to say it's a moisturizing cream yeah it does the job do i feel like oh my god i love this and i will never let it go no i actually probably will switch this out to try out a different moisturizer for instance i really have heard a lot of good things about the elf elf 
daily hydration moisturizer and i do want to try that that is also a very simple straightforward moisturizer that doesn't have a lot of like chemicals so if i switch out the aveeno it's going to be switched out for another moisturizer that's equally like simple and um, lacking of too many uh, chemicals and products and then the very last thing that i put on i actually really like this a lot it is the elf skin touchable invisible sunscreen so obviously spf is a very important part of one skincare routine yes for black people too we need to protect ourselves from like uv rays and such and especially if you are someone who is putting a lot of like serums or exfoliants and um product in your skincare routine or a product on your skin that makes your skin more sensitive you need to then make sure you are also protecting your skin from harmful rays from the sun so i love this elf um spf because especially as a black woman this does not leave a cast like i'm not trying to wear spf and then be looking like a ghost and be looking all pale and all kind of crazy and stuff so this is an invisible sunscreen it rubs in very nice and clear and then on top of that it also seconds as a primer so once i put this on i can then go ahead and put my makeup on and this allows my makeup to lay very like nice and smooth and flat and also for it to hold and last through the day really 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 love and enjoy this product if you get this product be careful that you don't get the um elf like whoa glow the packaging looks very very similar so this is different from the whoa glow um product that they have this is the uh sun touchable invisible sunscreen so the last thing that we will um that i'll mention for the most part that right there is my morning skincare routine i have my tasha rice wash i have my lizerol toner i have my hyaluronic acid by the ordinary i have my vitamin c by nip and fab i use a vino cream to moisturize and then i use the elf spf sun touchable and those invisible sunscreen to apply my spf as well to prime my skin before makeup so that's the morning routine daytime routine now let's get into the evening routine so again, as I have already mentioned, I did a lot of research to figure out what I wanted to be in these routines. And with respect to my hyperpigmentation, I knew that I wanted to have something in my routine that was going to help with that. And mandelic acid was something that um, Mariah said worked really well for her and that she has in her routine. And then also this topical product called Faded that I know a lot of black girls swear by, and it's also black owned. I know niacinamide also is known to help improve skin texture and reduce the appearance of pores. So that was also something I was considering. There were notes that I made to myself, like three important things that I said I always had to watch out so I could buy by. I knew I wanted to integrate a retinol into my routine because um, I don't know if any of y'all have seen Dr. Iwoma Ukulele, I don't remember how to pronounce her last name, but homegirl is Asian backwards. I'm trying to age backwards too. First off, as black women, we like naturally black don't crack. So we tend to like look younger than we actually are. But like when I am, I'm trying to be looking like I am 33. Three important notes to like not forget as I continue building out this um, skincare routine. And that first one was don't mix retinol with alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. So have an awareness of like, if you're gonna use retinol in your routine, like one evening, make sure you're not also using AHAs and BHAs and all these other like irritating stuff in that same like routine. I also kind of wanted to like, some people are like, oh, it's okay to use like retinol in the daytime as long as you make sure you really use an SPF and like a strong SPF. And that's all good and that's fine, but I'm like, why play with fire? So I knew my retinol was gonna be a part of my nighttime routine because I wasn't then trying to expose my um, retinoled up skin to the sun. Yeah, let me sleep at night, let it sink in in that way. So there's a reason why some things are in my morning routine and there's some things in my evening routine, yeah? Avoid mixing vitamin C with AHAs or BHAs. Doing so may cause skin sensitivity and be mindful of how many acids you're applying to your skin in one session, yeah? I think one thing that i have heard a lot with a lot of these like skin experts is that 
people kind of like accidentally over exfoliate because they're using like way too much um, way too many acids in like one go and a lot of like very popular cleansers and you know foaming washes and stuff or whatever you may have a lot of those have like way more AHAs and BHAs than we actually know so anyway I wanted to look out for that in my evening routine this um, took a while for me to land on and settle on but I use the La Roche Posay Effaclair Purifying Foaming Gel Cleanser. It is a pretty gentle cleanser. It has a tiny bit of citric acid, but because I knew that some of the other products that I was gonna get in my evening routine were gonna be strong, or they were gonna have AHAs and BHAs or some like kind of a strong chemical aspect to it, I knew I wanted a cleanser that was like pretty basic and like gentle. This smells amazing. I like the way that it like foams up a bit when I um, when I apply it to my face. And like, yeah, some of these products, they just feel smell so fresh and I'm like, I just feel like a bougie bee when I'm using them. So I do not regret buying this. I love the way it feels. I love the way it makes me feel. I just love like feeling like so rich with my rich ass products. <laughs> like getting undone at the end of the day or starting my day, I love it. The other cleanser that I was considering is the, how do you say, Avene, A-V-E-N-E, -E, um, cleanest cleansing gel, but that had AHA, AHAs. And again, how do I know all this stuff? Because they put all of these products in skin sort and like skin sort was highlighting for me what was in the product. The reality is you can look at the ingredient list of these products, but it's going to have some weird ass names that you were like not familiar with. And you probably won't recognize that, you know, die high flag wooly wooly gaga wooly dee is like an AHA, right? If only the product said like AHA, BHA, but I don't know what those scientific like names actually are. So skin sort helped me out a lot with, re with, um, identifying what products had AHAs or BHAs or other kinds of acids and stuff. Love definitely will continue to be a staple. When it comes to the toner to my step two for my evening routine, I alternate more or less between two different toners. This Ren Ready Steady Glow Daily AHA Tonic is something that I've seen Dr. Iwoma recommend i've seen a lot of other like skin doctors and experts online recommend it i looked at what was like in the product i looked at how it ranked and rated on skin store and i knew that this was going to be a toner that i try for sure and i do like it um i do think it does a good job of like helping you be like radiant and bright and so on and so forth but i think actually using this daily was kind of lending to a little bit of over exfoliation of my skin. So I have cut back a bit on this. I think before I was maybe doing like using this toner five evenings a week and then this twice. Now we're a bit more five evenings a week and maybe this is twice. This is a toner that Mariah recommended to me. She uses it. All of the stuff in here is in Korean because it's a Korean K-beauty product. It's called the Propolis Synergy Toner. And it's made with propolis extract and honey extract. So it's very like, we are making this product with stuff from bees. I also picked this toner because I was like, this toner doesn't have like AHAs or BHAs or whatever you may have it. So this is gonna be the toner that I use on the days that I decide to use retinol or on the days I decide to use a strong treatment. So it's a much more like neutral kind of toner. After I apply my toner in the evening, I then apply my serum. I still use hyaluronic acid. I use it day and night. I use it in the morning and I also use it in my evening routine as well. I thought that I would also integrate niacinamide into my evening routine because niacinamide is like a very popular um, serum that a lot of people use for uh, skin texture. Let me tell you what happened when I used niacinamide. Two things happened when I started using this like pure niacinamide. It's niacinamide 10% plus zinc 1%, let me say it correctly. It's a high strength vitamin and mineral blemish formula by The Ordinary. So two things happened. The first thing that was like, what? Was, you know, obviously in skincare routines, it's very common to layer your serums. And what I had found was that when I was layering my niacinamide 
with my hyaluronic acid, both by The Ordinary, the product would start pilling. Like, like even though I'd be tapping it into my skin, it's like the niacinamide would like congeal to the hyaluronic acid and it would kind of create these little like pills on my skin and the product was kind of just like congealing and kind of like coming off. So I was like, what? And I Googled it and went on Reddit and stuff and like that happens to a lot of people. Some people have said that the reason why the ordinary products, um, which are very popular, are so, and they're popular because they're affordable, but the reason why they're so affordable is because they use like the rawest form of the chemical or the product. You can get hyaluronic acid by a different company, by a different brand that will cost maybe like $80 or like 80 pounds, but whereas with uh, the ordinary, it costs like six pounds or something like that. And people in on Reddit and online were just saying like, yeah, like of course it pills. It's because it's like a low quality form. It's still like the proper form of the chemical, but people were like, it's not mixed with other things that like allow it to sit on your skin better. Anyways, the I was not gonna remove hyaluronic acid from my routine because like hyaluronic acid is the bomb and it like makes my feet my skin feel um, moisturized and it and it helps my skin from feeling thirsty. But like if stuff is pilling, like that's not what's up. So there's that. I also felt like after I had allowed my skin to get used to some of these other products, when I introduced the niacinamide, I felt like it was breaking me out. And I'm like not massively observant to like what products work for me and what doesn't. But I really feel like I kind of immediately spotted that I was breaking out when I started using this. Now, could it have overlapped with like some other reason for me breaking out, like maybe my hormones or like a certain place in my cycle. I don't know, maybe, but I felt like this was breaking me out when I stopped using it. I felt like the breakouts weren't really happening as much. And I also went online and like Googled that and it turns out a lot of people experience something similar with niacinamide. And what they have called it is called like purging. People say that when they use niacinamide or that when you use niacinamide, what it can do is that it causes like a lot of the gunk like in your skin or from under your skin to kind of rise from the surface. So like a lot of the um, gunk and bad stuff purges itself, which is a good thing in the long term because like that's it basically doing its job. But you know, the comments were saying niacinamide is great, but you have to be willing to be down to have your skin breaking out for like maybe anywhere from like four to six weeks. Right now, I'm not in that kind of place. So. For now, I've actually removed niacinamide from my routine because it hasn't been working for me. Will I try it again in the future? Probably, yeah, perhaps. But for now, that's that. Now let's talk about like the stronger or more specific treatments. So once I would cleanse and then tone with my more neutral toners, I decided I would dedicate one night a week where I would try retinol and then one night a week where I would try this faded serum for just like prevention of wrinkles and refinement of the fine lines or whatever and for the hyperpigmentation. I decided to go with the Ole Henriksen Double Rewind Pro Grade 0.3% retinol serum. Um, there's a ton of retinols on the market, but based off of the ones that I was seeing recommended most and reading reviews and comparing them um this one had been recommended by dr iwoma and basically she says that sounds good i'm down and i think the whole ole henriksen as a brand is like very reputable so it was like let me try this um the other retinol that i was considering was another one that was recommended by dr iwoma and that was the one by keels it's like a very very low level percentage of retinol and it's good for like beginners I'm like, this is a pretty like low enough level of retinol too. The Kiehl's one is even lower. I think it's like 0.1%. This is 0.3. I did a little test patch. It was fine. We're gonna go with it. I don't think I need to be on 0.1. Let's do 0.3 because I like, I'm trying to get results sooner than later. And the reality is with retinol, yeah, you gotta play the long game with retinol. So like, I'm not gonna start with 0.1% if I don't need to. I'm gonna start with 0.3 so that we can start seeing these results uh, like maybe in a year instead of in five. <laughs> So this like feels nice, it feels good on my skin, it makes me feel like I'm doing something like preventative and good for my skin health. 
but I don't, I, I can't say like, oh my God, I use the retinol and now like everything looks amazing. No, I just know that I just want to have retinol in my routine because I think my older self will thank me. I also liked that this retinol had this uh, skin barrier strengthening moisturizer that like pairs well with this retinol. This is expensive, this is expensive. But whenever I use this retinol, I use the Olay Henriksen Strength Trainer Peptide Boost Moisturizer afterwards. Retinol, obviously, a, you know, a strong product that's doing something to your skin. For a long time, I didn't use retinol because like maybe once 10 years ago, I tried to use a, like a retinol product like for under eyes by like L'Oreal or something. That shit burned my skin. I woke up the next morning with all these burn patches and scabs under my eyes and I was like, oh, I will never use this again. And that's the thing with retinol, like it can be very strong. And Dr. Woma cautions against this all the time. When you start retinol, you need to use like a low grade and slowly integrate it in to see how your skin reacts. So that's why like after I had that first experience 10 years ago, I was like F retinol, I will never use retinol again. Now that I am, you know, early to mid thirties and not like early to mid twenties, like let me give it like another go because I see the good things retinol is doing for these other ladies and they can do it for me. I just probably didn't use the right approach the first time around. So now we're smarter and wiser as we're older now. So let me show you this very nice packaging. One pump is good enough to get it all over my face. It also feels like very nice and like moisturizing. I know that's not necessarily what it's for, but it feels nice. And then this is the Olay Henriksen Strength Trainer Peptide Boost Moisturizer. It says vegan peptide ceramides and collagen. Compared to the other moisturizers here, which I'm also about, I'm gonna talk about, its texture is thicker. It's like, it feels heavy duty. Like it feels like if you're using strong-ish on your skin, you should follow up with this heavy duty moisturizer. The consistency is like very thick. It's almost a little bit like putty. So yeah, I like the way this feels on my skin after I use a treatment serum. The faded, is the other treatment that I use in the evening and this does exactly what it sounds like it does. It fades your dark, dark spots. I got in a, not, I got like in the trial size because again, I wasn't gonna know how this product was gonna respond to my skin. If I use it up, then I will get the bigger size. Faded, as I understand, is only sold in the US. So the thing that is annoying is if you're in the UK and you order this, like you're gonna have to pay like mad customs and like delivery fee and stuff. So I started by integrating it into my routine once a week. That has now been upped to like twice or three times a week. Cause like it works y'all, it works. But I, I feel like I almost see the effects like almost instantly. I definitely don't think this is something that you should use like every day per se, unless your skin can tolerate it. By using it twice a week, I feel like I'm actually seeing like results in a real way. So, but another reason why I won't use this like every day and the same with the retinol, I won't use that every day because I want to integrate mandelic acid also into my routine. And I can't be using like mandelic acid and a retinol on the same day. I'm not gonna use mandelic acid and faded cream on the same day. And the mandelic acid, as I mentioned to you, is something that I basically kind of forgot that I had ordered. But then when I started using it, this was another one where I felt like, oh damn, like the moment I start using this, I actually feel like I'm seeing results. So mandelic acid is meant to help with hyperpigmentation and like texture and stuff. So this helps like tone out my skin. I think on my journey to even skin, these two are gonna be like the two that are most responsible I find. Last but not least, let's get back to talking about the moisturizers. So I have a handful of moisturizers here. This was one of the first one, this Versed Skin Soak Rich Moisture Cream is one of the first ones that I got because Mariah recommended it and she likes it and she uses it. I do like it. It's one of those things where it's like, uh, not obsessed with it, but like, don't hate it. Yeah, like it, it, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, it's fine. Yeah. I wanted to try this um, Revolution Pro Miracle Cream because in my research, this was coming up again and again as like a suitable dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, I think it's called. I hate to say it because I actually do like Revolution products. Um, I do use like Revolution like setting powder for when I do my makeup and like all that kind of stuff. I really did not like this. Consistency wise, it reminds me of like your mom or your grandma's oil of Olay. Quite oily when I put it on. 
and I don't like the way it smells. The scent is very strong and it just makes me think of like Elizabeth Taylor, like perfume that my mom used to wear. Very strong and just very dated in its scent. A lot of the products in my routine now that have like a, a mild scent that I really enjoy, like the Tasha rice wash or even this uh, La Roche-Posay cleanser, the scent is mild, but it's very like fresh. This is like, I'm going to an evening Hollywood dinner. It's very strong and it kind of gives me a headache. So this very quickly like was ex name out of my routine. Now, what I do love. This is actually, I think probably maybe the only product here that I have not actually opened before and haven't started using because I was waiting for you guys. The Tasha Dewy Skin Cream. The sister moisturizer to the Tasha Rice Wash. Hey, remember, the small one came in this trial version. Loved it. Was like, I'm gonna splurge and I'm gonna get the big one, the big mama. A rich cream of antioxidant packed Japanese purple rice. Hyaluronic acid and replenishing nutrients that feed skin with plumping hydration for a dewy, healthy looking glow. Let me also add, I know that sometimes these terms in beauty are kind of overused. When it comes to different aesthetics for your skin or your makeup, like some people like to look matte. Some people like to look dewy. I don't like to look matte. I like to look dewy. I love looking dewy. I absolutely adore this line by Tasha. Listen, I know that like your girl is still in the pro process of growing her channel, but I truly wish to affirm in this moment a brand partnership with Tasha in the future because I love their products and I'm happy to rate them because oh my God, like even they're just like the packaging. There's like secret notes inside the box when you open it too. Like, what does this say? This piece was born in Japan, nurtured in California, and shared with you to spark a journey of care and well-being. I am here for it. Like, so nice. Love it. Love. J'adore, j'adore. When it comes to my moisturizers, I would say that the Tasha one is like my my go-to. If I use the retinol or the faded, I tend to use strength trainer, peptide boost moisturizer. Um, or if I have a day when I feel like my skin barrier is damaged or I'm in a season where I feel like my skin barrier is damaged, I feel like this helps restore my skin barrier. This is my favorite. This does the job of making sure I feel like moisturized and hydrated. I feel like this is the one that I turn to for very practical reasons because I use like a strong treatment or I need to restore my skin barrier. This one I'll like reach to, for, I'll reach for for some reason I like can't find the other ones. So guys, I would say that is my skin journey in a nutshell. I would love to say it's in a nutshell because it's barely a nutshell. So stay tuned for part two for the next vlog. Come back and join me to hear about how it's all gone and yeah. I can't wait to see you guys then. See you next time. No, oh, I need to go now. I have a dinner reservation. Literally need to go. How is it 6.34 already? I'm gonna have a dinner reservation in like 30 minutes. <laughs>